Hi, and welcome to another episode of The Sprugate, a miniature painting, scale modeling hobby channel where we'll go beyond the Sprugate and get every miniature or model painted. Today we're tackling the Colonial Marines from the brand new board game Another Glorious Day in the Core from Gale Force 9. Included in this video you'll see a number of figures from the Ultimate Badasses expansion which gives you a full sprue of new characters in addition to the ones included in the base game. I've read that these are 30mm miniatures, but having measured them they're more like a true 28mm and they aren't uh, in a heroic scale in that their proportions are more realistic and less exaggerated slash stylized. They look great and they've got great detail for board game models, so let's get them painted so we can get to the bug hunt. Because these are gaming pieces, rather than display models, we're going to go with a quick scheme that will give us the impressions and style of the movie Aliens, whilst taking some liberties with corner cutting to reduce the amount of time from hobby bench to dice rolling. First of all, we're going to prime the miniatures with an olive drab rattle can. This is available from your local Lowe's or Home Depot in the US, and are a great way to get the miniature both primed and base coated. One word of warning on this one is that the paint does come out of the can quite heavily, so just be careful and spray in lots of short bursts so you don't obscure the details with thick layers of paint. Now that's done, we're going to paint a very simple camo scheme using green and brown. I'm using Dirty Olive and Earth Brown from Reaper's Master Series Paint Range, MSP. These are quite thin paints and will look very vibrant as you put them on the model. It's a little bit scary, but don't worry, uh, they'll become much more muted as they dry and as we darken down other parts of the model, your hard work's going to start to pay dividends. I'm going for a Tiger Stripes style camo with uh, horizontal lines, partly because Grant, whose game this is, likes the pattern, and it's also fairly simple. As a rule, you want to paint your miniatures from the inside out. What I mean by that is you start with the layers and details most at the bottom or hidden inside of or behind things, then you work up layers upwards and outwards. So the camo will go on the chest armor and the shin pads and the helmets of the marine, and that's because it's underneath a lot of straps and guns and arms and other parts of the model. And this means we can get our brown on the straps because they'll be colored later masking our overpaint. Do be careful not to get paint on the olive cloth, as that's our final color there and we don't want to create more work for ourselves having to touch it up later. Now that's finished, we're using Olive Green, also from MSP, to paint the assault rifles. This paint's quite thin, and our undercoat is quite dark, so you'll definitely need two coats for this step. I forgot to shoot it, but I painted Hicks's shotgun and holster with Steel Legion Drab from Citadel as well during this time. The nice part about this technique is that we can plow through colors quite quickly, as we're painting different parts of the minis, and by the time we've painted one color across all the figures, the first ones are dry and ready to take another color or another coat. So now it's on to dark gray. I'm using Pavement, which is a cheap craft paint from Walmart. Uh, it's miserable to work with, but I love the color and I have the correct thinners that I use in ratio so I know how to work the pigments but I'm sure there's a million better dark greys out there. With this, we're gonna paint the gun muzzles, uniform webbing, boots, and the helmet mounted optics. Now, to add some depth and dimension to the Marines, we're going to take two shades from Citadel. Trusty Null Oil, which is a black, and Coelia Green Shade. And we're going to apply these to the model. The Null Oil will go on all of the weapons, as well as accessories like the Shotgun Holster and the Xenomorph Scanner. This will give definition to those parts, 
and also tone down the color of the fabric holster. It gives the impression that these are metal or some other heavy, durable, futuristic material. Once that's done, we're going to apply the Coelia green shade to everything that isn't painted in camouflage or one of the items we just shaded. So basically the boots, straps, and the olive drab jumpsuits. I really like this look because the blue green is a great motif in the movies and this helps to bring the characters in line with the scheme of the map tiles in the game. As we apply this, the models will get much darker. but the unshaded camo will read much brighter as a result, giving a very appealing look. At least I think so. You can see them starting to take shape. Just remember not to wash the camo or else you'll end up looking like Crow. And you don't want to look like Crow. <coughs> don't worry, he was a test model and he got fixed in post. Once that's all dried, it's time to place skin tones on the minis. I'm once again using MSP, and we'll be using their pale skin tone and some driftwood brown for Apone. These will 100% need two coats because they're very light colors and the pigments just show too much of the undercoat through. There's nothing worse than skin tones with undercoat showing through. It just looks awful. Once the two coats are applied and dried, uh, I like that rhyme. I'm going to keep that. Uh, then, then we're going to wash the skin tones with Reichland Flesh Shade and Agrax Earth Shade, respectively. The final part is now going through with some details. I use field gray for any caps, dark gray, that's my pavement color, for everyone's comms microphones, Mephiston red for Vasquez's bandana, and some light blue for detail on Hudson's scanner screen. Now they're all finished, it's time to do the bases. These will be done in the same way that I've done the Xenomorphs, spoilers for next week, which basically is using Lead Belcher to base coat the metal bases and using different shades to mimic the lighting and ambience of the map boards whilst also providing tonal variation and interest across the unit. This also dulls down that shiny Lead Belcher so it's not quite as distracting and looking like a disco ball. You can literally use any color shades that you want, but I chose to use ones like Druki Eye Violet, Dragonoff Nightshade, and Caraburg Crimson. I'd splash Nuln Oil on one half of the base, then splash one of those other colors on the other half, then I rinse the brush in clean water 
and apply it to the base quickly to blend the two colors and reduce the strength of each, almost flooding the surface. Not flooding, but there's still a, a good drop or two of water on the brush, and it helps just to, to tone and blend everything together. Once done, you can see they look great especially when put together as a group, or individually. Our final touches are to paint the rim bases with Abaddon Black and the nameplates with Mephiston Red. Both of these are Citadel base colors, so hopefully they only need one coat of them. And that's the paint job complete. The last step is to use this tester's dawn coat to spray varnish the miniatures. This is a matte varnish, so it won't have any ugly sheen, and it'll help to protect your paint scheme whilst playing and moving the miniatures around on the board. It's one that you'll want to spray outside in a well-ventilated area. And here's the final product. I'm actually very happy with these. They look like they're part of the game's intended aesthetic. They look very nice together, grouped up in a squad. Not, you know, none of them stand out in, in very strange ways. And here's the Marines taking on a Xenomorph Horde, which will be the quick tutorial on their own next week. Thanks for stopping by, and please subscribe and follow on Twitter and Instagram for other projects, works in progress, and updates. And have a good one.